I guess I'm really focused on the actual edge and how it's going to cut and getting the absolute perfect edge for trying to find some perfection each time with each blade. Uh, you can actually close your eyes and sharpen after you've been doing it for so long and keep the, the edge there. Uh, sometimes I do that, and, uh, but most of the time, yeah, you're, you can actually, you don't really see it. It's more of a feeling. You can hear the blade running across the stone. It goes back to my grandfather that was an architect, but also he was a woodworker. And he used mostly Japanese tools. And uh, he used to sharpen those that steel and always would uh, kind of remark that there's something very different about it than the Western tools that he used. So um, I, I learned how to kind of sharpen steel from him. I guess when you polish blades and you there's a reflection in it that kind of disappears and when you're actually sharpening blades, some Japanese steel that have a transition from soft to hard steel. It's almost like clouds in the sky. So when you're looking into that polish, it's like you're looking off into space or into infinity. You were saying that there's no knife that you won't sharpen. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't believe that uh, there's any real hierarchy in blades. Someone once brought me their grandmother's parry knife that was maybe 80 years old and it had been sharpened so many times that it actually was like almost down to a needle. And the handle was still intact pretty much. It just needed a bit of refurbishing and uh, some treatment on the wood and the blade was easy to sharpen. So, yeah. To that person, that had a huge amount of significance because they see history in that blade, right? So to them, there's an entire world encompassed in that, that blade, which most people would discard. 